Hey. Oh, Take yeah. a seat. Come. Hey. One on one. Let's do. Hey. Hey. You sit beside you. You sit down. You sit, you sit down. You sit. Just go there. Please stand. Sit down. Just on midnight, Sergeant Chris Mann is lasering a car doing just under 120 kilometres an hour. 19. Constable Callum Dewsnap accelerates the patrol car to get in behind the speeder, who's having difficulties staying in his lane. Uh, just going to catch up to a car, just come on the uh, on-ramp behind us and uh, accelerated quite quickly once it went past us and just lasered at 119, so we're going to have a chat. The vehicle ahead is a beaten-up 25-year-old Honda. Come, speak to fire, 3 2. Hello there. Hi. Hey, uh, I lasered you at 119. Rubbish. No rubbish at all. You accelerate it, you accelerate it. Have you got your licence on your things? No, you don't. Know. What's it, sorry? No, he doesn't. So you don't have your licence on you? To be honest, no. I will, if I have the illness, you'll never hear of me, boy. So I can't understand what you're saying. What was that? If I have the illness engine, you'll never hear of me. OK. But to be honest, I'm not trying. The man says he's slurring his words because he's tired from working long hours. But Chris knows the language of liquor. This driver is wasted. 96 hours. I did 96 hours. The hard-working New Zealander is keen to impress on his industrious nature and his head-turning car. Come, come around here, my friend. To his allegedly responsible drinking habits. How much you had to drink? Two cans. Oh, it might be a little bit more than two cans, I think. Let's count one to five. You only had two cans. It might be real big cans. OK, so it's coming up alcohol, so we just need to do another test. OK? I only had two cans. I only had two full percentages. Come on. A two-minute test will tell if it's two cans. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. That's a good man. Or too much. Come on. I only had two cans. That's not two cans. Chris explains what's going to happen next. As the man's partner agrees to drive the car home. Are you quite happy to come and pick him up or not particularly? But while the woman is 100% sober, her partner isn't 100% sure she can handle his hotted up Honda's immense power. This Honda goes hard. I did two feet on the Honda before. Yeah, she goes hard. Probably not the people to be telling that to. <laughs> Admitting to prior speeding is commendable, but unusual. As I said before, we're going to go back to the Manukau Police Station oh, here we go. and uh, we'll get an exact reading and we'll see how many cans you have actually had to have, I, eh? I only had two cans. You only had two cans? Wood socks. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But the back seat becomes a cop car confessional as the man continues oversharing. I'm a good driver. I'm a good driver. You're a good driver. Yes. Well, it was your driving style that got you caught tonight. I've never crashed in my life, right? The thing is, even though it crashes, didn't plan on crashing. I'm on petrol here, right? I didn't kill. I'm in Oh, well, each to their own. It's for car. Off the clock. Go on. Off the clock. Two, two, three, two, four, two, three. Just keep climbing, don't stop. Do you always talk like this after you've had two cans? Finally at the station, it's time to see how much booze is racing around inside this wannabe yeah, race car yeah. driver's system. I need two cans. Two EBA attempts later, it's official. I need two cans. Mr. Two Cans had too much. Well, uh, it's my own people. The legal drinking drive limit is 250, OK? You'll be blowing 669. Oh. I need okay. two cans. Yep. I'll buy my license back. Attention span over here, my friend. Oh, yeah, you Well, look at me, OK? Just look at me. Look at me. This is no episode of Kath and Kim. <laughs> With the EBA process not going his way... That's good, that's good. ..the man turns his anger on Constable Juice now. Hey, take a seat. Hey. Hey. One on one. This is good. Hey. Hey. You sit down. You sit down. You sit down. You sit down. Yes. Hey, take a seat. Take a seat. What? 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 Hey, take a seat. <laughs> All right, uh, well, that turned out to be a bit of an interesting end to the uh, EBA. Uh, 
He obviously made it a lot worse than it needed to be. Uh, he's now been charged with uh, resisting arrest and obviously his drink driving offence. He's lost his licence for 28 days. And he'll go to court next week in relation to his charges. Motorcycles broken down uh, against a concrete barrier in the middle of the motorway. The traffic's quite heavy. Uh, he's not going to be able to get across the traffic without some help by the sounds of it, so we'll go down and block the traffic and let him get across. We should be able to see him actually, you know, when we come up the tip top corner here. Yeah, there he is. ATOC cameras reveal the man is on his phone, but it's not to police. Calling police in a situation like this is the first thing he should do. Yeah, Cobbett, if he does call in, um, just let him know we'll be blocking the traffic. He needs to push his bike down to the safest um, shoulder on the left hand side. After coming back around and behind the stranded motorcyclist, Andy holds traffic using a rolling block technique. Signals on his roof and weaving across lanes stops anyone passing. He's still down there? Looks like it. Andy's block will give the biker a clear space to get moving. The problem is, he appears distracted. You might have to put your siren on, mate. He's been hit with his cell phone. He might not be able to see you. He's not looking behind. The man hasn't spotted the completely vacant motorway behind him. A plan B, Victor, one. Uh, he looks like he's picking his helmet up. I think you might have to have a wet chance, haven't you? Looks like he's finally got the idea. Quite naturally, Andy and his colleagues now want to find out what on earth the man thought he was doing. Just a little bit hard to understand how he could have noticed that the motorway traffic went from being really heavy to a complete stop, and he wasn't in any hurry at all to move off on his bike. The rider of the on-again, off-again motorcycle is fully licensed, and his bike's warranted and registered. So why the breakdown? <laughs> what was the story with the bike? Oh, I just cut out. Did it? Yeah, so yeah. I called the um, tow company and they said to try some stuff and switch back on. Oh, OK, and that worked good. It's not running so well, so um, mm. I just tried to get it off the motorway, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen to you again, but when something like that does happen, your first priority should be to call the police. Sure. Because, you know, you're seriously at risk when you're stuck against a scene of uh, barrier like that. We obviously want to get you safe as quickly as we can. Don't hesitate to ring 111 with something like that because of the risk involved, you know? Yeah, sure. OK, are you going to be OK with your bike? Is it going to start again, do you think? Or... Yeah. Now for the moment of truth. <laughs> Success. Yeah, yeah. 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 Instead of doing the sensible thing and calling the police, um, he's got on the phone to AA and been receiving instructions on how to fix his motorbike. Fingers crossed it doesn't happen to him again, but if it does, he just sort of gets his priorities right and calls the police, you know, just to keep everyone safe.